Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. This is our week seven garden tour and I actually went back and counted. It has been 49 days since I planted this garden. And of course, some of the plants were started from transplants, but a majority of the plants that you're gonna see today, I started from seed 49 days ago. That's wild. Let's go take a look. All right, we're going to quickly check in on this first area where I planted squash. If you're new here, this is kind of an experimental area. I wasn't really sure what would happen if I just like kind of dug a hole in the ground and didn't bother pulling up all the lawn around it. And as you can see, some of these plants are pretty dinky compared to the ones you're about to see. Um, and so I would say that they're probably being choked out by the grass. And I guess that that is understandable and maybe predictable. However, I think I might still get some fruits. There is a baby butternut in here. Oh, and there are squash bugs. I have been picking these guys off um, pretty regularly, just trying to keep the population down. Here are some of their eggs. If y'all remember, I had a problem with these guys last year. And so last year I did not pick the um, squash bugs off at all because I didn't realize what they were. But squash bugs are basically little insects that will suck the sap out of the leaves of your plants and leave them looking like they are dying, just like this. This is evidence of squash bug damage. It starts out with the yellowing of the leaf and then eventually the leaf in the areas where it has been eaten just dies. And it can look like a disease, it can look like maybe you're doing something wrong, but this is usually squash bug damage and especially if you see their eggs or you see the bugs around, then for sure you know that that is what's going on with your plant. And I believe these are some squash bugs that are getting ready to lay some eggs. <laughs> uh, better to get them sooner rather than later. And so as you guys know, I don't like to spray anything on my garden. I don't use insecticides. I don't even like to use stuff like diatomaceous earth because it is so non-specific and I really do want to cultivate in an ecosystem where there are predators and prey and everything kind of balances itself out and that means not just blanket killing everything and so with the squash bugs even though hand picking them I know I'm not going to get all of them that's kind of the point so I am acting the part of a predator because the number of natural predators are so low compared to what it like might have been when uh, squash bugs were starting to fit into the ecosystem. Um, but they are still prey bugs and their eggs are still food for other insects in the garden. And so what I can do is kind of cut down the population manually a little bit selectively and then the environment does the rest. At least that's the idea. That is the thing that I'm working on in this garden is figuring out what level of that I need to be at to keep everything like just kind of working together for itself. And besides hand picking, the other thing that I do is I will remove all of the squash debris from the garden um, because that is where they like to overwinter. And if I can remove some of their overwintering spots, then I can reduce the initial population and make it a lot easier to control and kind of keep tabs on throughout the growing season. So wow, let's check out these sunflowers. These are just about to bloom. I can tell there is this. I'm hoping by next week you guys get to see the beautiful blooms. And these are a little bit of a surprise bloom. Uh, my friend Krista, who is helping me plant, I gave her a couple of packets of seeds and I said, surprise me. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what color it's going to bloom and I think that that's a little fun. And the tomatoes are looking incredible. These plants are absolutely loaded with fruit now. 
and they are shiny. I don't know if y'all can see how shiny that is as opposed to this new one, which is a little more of a dull, like fuzziness. So the shiny ones, I think have stopped growing and are now in the process of ripening. And unfortunately, a tomato takes like four weeks to ripen. So we are still maybe another week out from ripe tomatoes because these have been shiny for a couple of weeks now. Um, it just seems to take so much longer than you would think. But really, the amount of time it takes to grow to full size, that amount of time again is what it takes to ripen. I actually just noticed this one is blushing. This would be the first ripe tomato in the whole garden. It's so exciting. And the pepper patch is doing pretty well, except there is just a touch of disease going on. Um, right here, you can see these spots on the leaves. Um, I think that that is a fungal disease that spreads through contact. So I've been trying to pull, pull all the leaves that have that on it and then throw them in a separate pile away from my compost. And I also put down some bokashi grain underneath all of the peppers to hopefully have uh, good bacteria outcompete with the fungus. I don't know if it works that way, but that's kind of was my intuition was to put a bunch of good microbes in there and uh, see if that could kind of help balance things out. Wow, look at that marigold next to this jigsaw pepper with that beautiful variegation. And then there's little peaks of purple, of flowers and the peppers in there. Oh, that is so pretty. And I need to show you guys this pepper. It is huge and it hasn't even started turning yet. So these are gonna be, these are Edgevarsky peppers. So they are sweet peppers and they have a really thick flesh, which makes them really great for frying up. So many cute little mushrooms in the garden this morning. What a good sign. I've got a few nasturtiums around, but none of them have bloomed yet. And a lot of the marigolds that I planted from seed also have not bloomed yet, but maybe soon. Right in front of me is a pumpkin vine that came from all the way over there. And the eggplants are doing fantastic. I actually have, look right here, an eggplant. So I was looking into when to harvest eggplants because I've never grown them before. And the advice seems to be to wait until they've stopped growing and are nice and firm. And then that's when you pick them. So I'm gonna be obsessively watching this eggplant to see when it stops growing. So this one is an Antigua. And then I have my first baby of the other variety over here, the Nagasaki Long. The beans are doing amazing. I've actually been harvesting from these plants the last couple of days. And if you remember, this whole row was eaten down to sticks by deer, just sticks. And I didn't replant, they grew back. There's a couple of fresh plants that I put in because I wasn't sure but the vast, vast majority of these just grew back from that devastation. And let me remind you, 49 days ago is when I put these seeds in the ground, May 28th. So I am blown away by these plants. They are healthy, they are producing. Most beans are in the 50 to 55 day range for harvest, so these are a little early. And they did it after being eaten by deer, which is just, like, wow. So from the top, you can't really tell, but underneath, these are just putting on beans like crazy. And with beans, you want to harvest early and often if you want to increase your harvest. So basically when you harvest the beans before they're ready, before the seeds inside have matured, the plant is like, oh no, I didn't reproduce. Let's try again. So it usually will grow a little bit more and make more flowers and make more beans for you. 
So harvesting early and often keeps the plant in that production mode and doesn't let it shut down by producing a mature seed. And this is true of a lot of different plants in the garden. Tomatoes are this way, peppers are this way. So something to keep in mind when you are thinking, oh, but I want to wait and not harvest everything because like, what if that's all I get? No, like the sooner you harvest, the better. Wow, the tomatoes look even prettier from over here, if that's possible. Oh, and check this out. This looks gross, but this is a fungus. It's just another iteration of good mushroom in the garden. Last couple days we've gotten so much rain. Let's step into the tunnel. This is noodle beans. And I actually have some coming in to show you. This one has the flower and a bean on it. Most of these produce two beans at their little flowering tips. And this currently is like uh, 12 inches long or so. And it will get maybe a little longer and then it'll start thickening up to like green bean width. Here's some more cute ones to look at. Actually, the more I look above me, the more I see. This is gonna be such an interesting little arch in just a week or two. I think it's also interesting to see these ants they live on this plant, basically. I've seen them both times I've grown it. So I think that they are a species that is just naturally into this plant. And I know some species of ants will cultivate aphids on plants, but I don't see any aphids that they're cultivating. I don't see really what they're doing. They're not even really eating the plant either. Um, so I don't really know what they're doing on this plant. Um, I just know that they like it. And yet another pumpkin vine is invading all the way across the garden. We are going to step over carefully and check out the cucumbers, which are right here. And they are not looking so hot. I've been uh, pruning off a lot of leaves that look like this. I think this is powdery mildew, um, but I'm not entirely sure. If anybody knows for sure what it is, let me know. But the reason I think it might be powdery mildew is because these leaves are so dense together and they are in the shade. And so they're probably just not getting enough good airflow. But I have been pulling a lot of cucumbers off of these vines. So they are all in all, doing okay. And there's even more baby cucumbers coming in. They are so cute when they're this size. Now in front of me is the zinnia patch slash impromptu tomato trellises. Um, these have been holding up pretty well so far. Um, I'll probably need to add another layer of string as they get taller. But the tomatoes over here, they are behind, but doing well, healthy. These are some of the ones, again, that got eaten down by the deer. A couple of them to a single branch of leaves. And look at them now. They are fine. Absolutely fine. I think this color of zinnia is my favorite. It's like this pretty coral color. Oh, that's my favorite color in the world, actually. If I look up into the corner of the garden, I can see my corn patch, which is looking great. Uh, we'll see if I have time for it to make corn cobs this year, because I did plant them a little late. There is a little cornfield that I drive by on my way to the recycling center, and uh, their corn is tasseling right now. So mine is obviously a little bit behind, but it looks like it's not that far behind. And because those beans did so well, they were done early. Um, I'm wondering if the soil is good enough for my corn to get done early too. That would be very convenient. Wow. 
This just amazes me every week. Look at that pumpkin patch. Back there is my biggest pumpkin. Ooh, you'll see it. Look at that thing. I'm so excited. This same plant also has a bunch of little babies on it. So I'm thinking I will get a couple of good pumpkins from this plant. Squash looked fine until they didn't. And I am pretty sure at this point that it was vine borers that got to these guys. And it all happened so fast, I didn't really know what to do. And actually, you can see there was a plant here that I took out, and there was another plant over here and here that I took out. And it's kind of sad. I got maybe one or two fruit off of each of them before they keeled over like this. And you can see same thing is kind of happening to this pumpkin. But unlike the bushing squash, it's going to be okay because everywhere along its vines that it has put out, it can put down new roots. And so as long as I don't disturb those roots, the stuff at the extremities on the vines is going to be perfectly fine, no matter what happens to this main stem. Although this main stem is putting up with a lot more than some of the bushing squashes did. I am definitely open to ideas in this department for preventing this next year, um, but keep in mind I'm trying not to spray things or be um, overly aggressive with anything that I try because I don't want to accidentally kill good things and I don't want to really put the environment out of balance any more than it admittedly already is. I just saw these from across the way. These are much closer to what noodle beans are when they are ready to pick. These ones maybe have a couple more days on them, but this is what I'm looking for. When I do eventually harvest enough to cook, I will be doing a harvest and cook video on those because I know they're kind of a weird thing to think about eating. They're a little bit like green beans, but there are very specific things that you cannot do to them that you can do to green beans. Check out this beauty. Protector of the garden. More mushroom friends. There's such a variety of mushrooms in my garden this year. It's very cool. All right, before we go, let's take a quick look at the container garden. This is mostly peppers and basil, but I do have my baby lavender plant that is growing as slow as anything can grow. My stevia plants, this one I grew from seed this year, and this one grew back from its root ball after overwintering, which I think is pretty cool. And I have some peppers in here. These peppers actually, so if you look, you see this dirt under here? So we moved all of these to mow underneath and actually ended up ripping up some of the roots that had come through the cloth bag into the ground. And so these plants have actually been looking a little more sad than usual lately. Although because it rained yesterday, they're looking perky and bright for this tour. <laughs> but I wasn't having to water them, and now I do. So, probably not gonna make that mistake again. And of course I can't leave you without updating you on my single seed challenge. This is, <laughs> this is a jigsaw pepper that I grew from a single seed. Um, if you're not familiar with the challenge, basically it comes from the idea that when we are gardening, we just kind of throw a lot of seeds in there and then take the strongest plants and go from there. And this challenge is all about remembering what a single seed can do and the whole plant that it can produce. So my single seed challenge has been putting on beautiful little red fruits and just doing great, being kind of a little um, kitchen bonsai, if you will. <laughs> Alrighty, well that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I come out with a new garden tour every Wednesday and sometimes other videos too, time permitting. Life is getting a little hectic right now, but I promise I'm working on a lot of cool videos for y'all. So until next time, I wish you guys happy gardening.